What is up, guys? Nick Scrip here on the Fan Tracks Twitter page. We are talking about fantasy football bounce back players for this coming NFL season. So, referring to a bounce back is a player that probably didn't have the greatest of 2022 seasons. Maybe it was injuries, maybe it was underperforming, whatever the case is, but we believe they are going to bounce back for fantasy football purposes back to relevancy in 2023. So I have a list of guys that I wanted to talk about today. Uh, also, this is going to be my first stream on the Fan Tracks Twitter page. Really looking forward to doing this more often, dropping tons of content and leading the way for the NFL side of Fan Tracks, who has done a great job across all sports. I'm hoping to give it a good push for the fantasy football world. So uh, when it comes to the bounce back candidates, first one I want to talk about today is Jonathan Taylor. Uh, who had a disappointing 2022. He was nearly the consensus 101 in one quarterback leagues. 11 games played, not seeing a single touch in the fantasy playoffs was not what fantasy managers obviously wanted last season. He averaged 13.3 fantasy points per game, also not super ideal. In 2021, though, through 17 games when healthy, JT finished with a lot of number ones attached to his name. Comparing him versus all running backs, he had 332 rushing attempts, so these are all categories he was number one in. Rushing yards, 1,811. Total touchdowns with 20. And various other categories, such as evaded tackles, yards created, and breakaway runs. All of those number ones resulted in being number one for fantasy football at the position. He averaged 21.9 fantasy points per game. That is very good. The Colts have had roster changes. We obviously have a new quarterback and rookie, Anthony Richardson. Uh, leading the way, there's a lot of things that might be shifting around with, you know, roles. We have Josh Downs as a wide receiver. What's Alec Pierce's role going to be? What's going to be the pass to run ratio? What I think, though, is Jonathan Taylor remains the same. I think he's going to get a, a heavy workload, be a top three running back and rushing attempts, rushing yards, rushing touchdowns. And I think he could be a guy that could uh, go back to uh, top three upside for the fantasy football running back position. So, even with Anthony Richardson at the quarterback position, I do have a lot of confidence in Jonathan Taylor being a focal point again in this offense and bouncing back. Next guy on my list I want to talk about is Deshaun Watson. So in 2022, he only played in six games following this uh, suspension. He averaged 15.1 fantasy points per game, so nothing spectacular there. If we look at the games he played, quarterback 30, quarterback 14, quarterback 21, quarterback 20, and then he capped off the last two weeks with top 10 performances. So, you know, what we expected was only really those last two games of the season, but maybe that was encouraging. Uh, people tend to forget a player's production when there is a gap in not being relevant. In the four seasons played prior to 2022, Watson averaged over 21 fantasy points per game in all of them, and he was a top five fantasy quarterback in points per game in all three of his full seasons played. He's had season highs of 4,823 passing yards back in 2020. He had 33 passing touchdowns in that same season. He rushed for 551 yards in 2019. He had seven rushing touchdowns in 2019. So we're looking at traits of an elite fantasy football quarterback. Mike Clay ranked Cleveland's offensive line number two back in May. Amari Cooper is coming off of a career-high 1,160 receiving yard season. Nick Chubb is one of the best runners in the league. Elijah Moore, somebody I love and think is going to have a career turnaround in Cleveland. David Njoku is a high upside tight end. Donovan Peoples-Jones can stretch the field as a deep threat. Cedric Tillman was just drafted. We have a quarterback with an elite fantasy production history and statistics to back that up. Now in a great system in 2023, I think Watson has top five upside for this coming year. Next, we have Russell Wilson. So Russell Wilson came off an ugly season, just in all honesty. Uh, career lows in completion percentage with 60.5%. In fantasy points per game with 15.8%. Or I'm sorry, 15.8. In 2022, uh, it just wasn't ideal in comparison to what he did. Back in Seattle, his first season in Denver with all the hype was not there. Uh, he averaged 20-plus fantasy points per game in 5 out of 11 of his seasons played through history. He threw 40 touchdowns back in 2020. He had four seasons over 4,000 passing yards. So those are the numbers we have known from Russell Wilson. They were not there year one in Denver. 
Sean Payton's hired as the new head coach. Uh, it's it's probably the biggest coaching news of the NFL in the offseason. This guy's had a 139-84 and 84 overall record and years of overseeing a Drew Brees offense, and that's been a guy that Russell Wilson originally was compared to. Uh, the consensus seems to be out on Russell Wilson after such a bad season, but I see a couple boxes being checked. Number one, he has a fantasy and real-life resume back in Seattle. It's It's been many years of good things versus this one bad thing. Number two, Sean Payton's resume. We look at his, his coaching resume and what he's done for the Saints uh, back in the day. And then um, we also have uh, the core of Jerry Judy, Cortland Sutton, Marvin Mims, Tim Patrick, Greg Dulcich. I think that's a slept on core of pretty good weapons. So I think that Wilson stock can get back to what it once was maybe not as high as he was at his peak, but this is a guy we've seen do much better for the fantasy world. who just had a coaching change and I think has a pretty good system. Next on the list, one of my favorite uh, bounce back candidates in general here is Calvin Ridley. Uh, the last time Calvin Ridley played football was October 24, 2021. So it's been a little bit of time there. Uh, a, gambling, a gambling suspension cost him all of last season. People forget how elite Ridley was in the past. Back in 2020, Ridley had a career uh, year with 143 targets, 90 receptions, 1,374 receiving yards, nine touchdowns and he averaged 18.8 fantasy points per game, which ranked fourth for the uh, position. The former first-round draft pick has earned 92, 93, and 143 targets through his first three seasons. He's shown us receiving yard and touchdown upside, as well as just elite fantasy football production. Ridley lands in Jacksonville with Trevor Lawrence, who took major strides forward in his second NFL season. Lawrence had... Over 4,000 passing yards, a significant jump in his completion percentage. He more than doubled his passing touchdowns, and he had the likes of Christian Kirk, Zay Jones, Evan Ingram, all fantasy productive. To me, Calvin Ridley is the most talented receiving option on the roster and has shown us far more than any other player on this team for fantasy. Some analysts have argued and debated Calvin Ridley or Christian Kirk but I am very firmly on the side of Calvin Ridley for this 2023 season. I expect him to have heavy targets and show us what he has done in the past, and I think he has top 12 upside. Lamar Jackson, very, very easy bounce-back candidate. The issue with Lamar Jackson in the last two seasons has not been the production when on the field. It's been the when on the field part of it. Back-to-back uh, -back seasons playing just 12 games. This is, however, one of the highest upside quarterbacks for fantasy football, and it's been evident through the years. Um, he opened up the season in 2022 with two performances out of his first three games at 40-plus fantasy points. Four straight seasons ranging from 20.3 to 28.2 fantasy points per game. Four straight seasons ranging from 764 to 1,213 rushing yards. And he had a career high 36 passing yards in that touchdown, uh, passing touchdowns in that uh, MVP season. Baltimore gave Jackson the bag in the offseason. That's great. Todd Munkin was brought in as the new offensive coordinator from Georgia. We hopefully now have a healthy J.K. Dobbins. Most of all, Jackson has the strongest receiving core he's ever had. He has one of the best tight ends in Mark Andrews. He has two first-rounders now, Zay Flowers from 2023, Rashad Bateman from 2021. And then we have a veteran in Odell Beckham Jr. The combination of what he's done in the past for fantasy football, what we saw last season when healthy, him back in Baltimore with his best-ever core. Lamar Jackson is uh, a quarterback that has overall QB1 upside. Cooper Cup. In 2022, another guy that had high expectations, similar to Jonathan Taylor, but was a disappointment due to missed time. Uh, he had a historic 2021 season. Uh, he did average still in 2022 the most fantasy points per game when he played, 22.4. Uh, he saw 10-plus targets and finished with 100-plus receiving yards and 55.56% of his games played. That's a high rate. In 2021, he lit it up completely, lit the fantasy world on fire, averaging 25.9 fantasy points per game. He had 145 receptions on 191 targets, nearly 1,950 receiving yards. Uh, he had 16 touchdowns. He was number one in targets, target share, receptions, receiving yards, yards after the catch, total touchdowns, fantasy points per game, and yards per route run, a.k.a. he was the man. He was the absolute 
best wide receiver in 2021. Missing time and being 30 plus years old, though, can make fantasy managers wary. But the numbers speak for themselves. The last two seasons, Cup has proven to be an elite fantasy wide receiver, and Matthew Stafford should be healthy in this coming season. He missed significant time back in 2018 as well, but he's appeared in at least 15 games in all of 2019 through 2021. So this is a guy that looks healthy and should be back on the field. The Rams didn't really add anybody to catch passes of significance to change anything when it comes to his target share. And this was the triple crown winner back in 2021. So a healthy Cooper cup obviously has wide receiver one upside. And I think with his abilities, his connection to Matthew Stafford and what he has done in this Sean McVay offense, he's obviously due for a bounce back. Darren Waller is another guy I'm very high on this, this season. Another guy with some injury uh, issues, though. Nine and 11 games played in 2022 and 2021. That's been disappointing, especially following his career year in 2020, where he saw 145 targets and caught 107 of them for 1,196 receiving yards and nine touchdowns. That season, he averaged 17.4 fantasy points per game, which is just unheard of for the tight end position. This is a guy who's had two seasons in his career over 1,100 receiving yards on his resume. He's averaged top five fantasy points per game for the position in each of those two seasons. Waller lands in New York on the Giants, and this is a team that lacks solidified pass catchers. We have a bunch of question marks, some young guys. I mean, Isaiah Hodgins was pretty good last season. We don't look at him as some sort of alpha, though. Darius Slayton, downfield threat. Paris Campbell looks good, but Paris Campbell, Jalen Hyatt was drafted. I like Wandale Robinson a lot for dynasty purposes. But he's recovering from a big injury. Sterling Shepard's been good, but another guy that is coming off of a big injury. Waller has the opportunity to be the like Travis Kelsey of the Giants. I'm not saying he will be Travis Kelsey. I'm not saying anything related to Daniel Jones is Patrick Mahomes. Nothing like that. I'm saying he could be the Kelsey as in the solidified number one target in this offense. And seeing that Daniel Jones had a career year in passing attempts, passing yards, and he had the lowest amount of turnovers, you're one with Brian Dable. I think that brings you some optimism for Darren Waller. Uh, Waller simply needs to stay on the field, but he checks all of the boxes that you want out of a fantasy tight end. He's displayed the receiving yard upside. He's had a uh, history of high fantasy points per game. He's going to get high and consistent target volume. This is stuff we've seen before. I really like Waller this, this coming season. I was very spicy and ranked him tight end too. Last guy I'm going to mention here, uh, Brandon Cooks, I, you know, I'll mention two guys. We got some time. Last guy I'll mention here uh, that I noted, uh, Brandon Cooks, he had a disappointing 2022 in Houston, playing the least amount of games since 2014. He only played 13. He had a pretty poor 11.2 fantasy points per game. Not to scapegoat the fantasy portion of it, but this was led by Davis Mills, who was benched throughout the season. This was on a tanking Houston team that was just not very good. Um, this guy's been consistently productive throughout his career. He's had six seasons of 114 plus targets, six seasons over a thousand receiving yards and six seasons of 20 fantasy points per game or top 20 fantasy points per game for the position. Dallas moved on from Dalton Schultz. That frees up some targets there. Uh, they, they've really needed the wide receiver two to step up. I know Michael Gallup. Some people have liked him. He's going to be further away from his ACL injury. I think he's a good wide receiver, but I think he operates as a better wide receiver three in an offense on a high passing volume offense, which which Dak has had in the past. Um, 2021, Dak averaged 37.3 passing attempts per game. Uh, he's had two seasons over 4,400 passing yards and two seasons of 30-plus passing touchdowns. So this is an offense that has thrown the ball at a pretty good rate and has been productive. Cook's, uh, Cook's resume for receiving production – and the fantasy relevance topped with the volume in Dallas, I think should make him a, a good flex option, at least for this coming season. And he's a guy that's probably going to go late per usual, but I, I really like him in Dallas. Last guy, and then I'm done. I'm closing this out. Last guy I want to mention uh, is Najee Harris, who a lot of people seem to be out on. 2022 was a step back for Najee across the board with regression in rushing attempts, rushing yards, receptions, receiving yards, and most importantly for us, fantasy points per game. 13.2 points per game, ranked 19th in comparison to his rookie season. He averaged 17.7 fantasy points per game. Uh, that was sixth. 
A Liz Frank injury in 2022 to his foot arguably was the source to the dip in production that lingered out through much of the season. But following the bye week, which people don't note enough, Najee looked like he was healthy. He looked apart again. After the bye, uh, he ranked from weeks 10 through 18, number three in rushing yards. He tied for number four in rushing touchdowns. He was number seven in total fantasy points. He averaged 15.1 during that span. So Najee, after the bye, looked healthy, and he did much better for the position in comparison to what he did earlier in the year. He commands uh, a snap share ranking top 12 uh, for percentage the last two seasons. He's had two seasons over 1,000 rushing yards. We saw him catch 74 balls his rookie season, so we know that that's like in the bag and maybe he can get somewhere in between that and the 41 he had in 2022 in this coming season. Back-to-back -back seasons, he scored 10 total touchdowns. That's a big plus to be a double-digit touchdown, uh, touchdown score in his first two seasons. If he doesn't have any lingering foot issues and Pittsburgh takes steps forward as an offense under Kenny Pickett, I think that more people should be optimistic about Najee Harris, especially seeing the chunk of games in 2022 where he looked himself. Uh, the post by numbers were very encouraging. The rookie season, I think, speaks for itself in those numbers. I think people have overhyped Jalen Warren. I think he could be a good handcuff, but I think Najee is a workhorse uh, in a league that doesn't have a lot of workhorses. So I do like Najee Harris to bounce back this coming season. That'll do it for this episode, though. Uh, wanted to come on here on the fan tracks page, talk some fantasy football, talk some bounce backs. Hopefully, we'll have some great guests from the industry along with some other fan tracks analysts on these streams as we push the brand forward and get you guys ready for this coming NFL season. Thanks for checking it out, guys.